Hi, mate. Dan, thank you. OK, I want to get to some breaking news here on weekend today. We know that Donald Trump is right now campaigning in Pennsylvania. Well, a short time ago, and this is news just into the newsroom, mm -hmm. uh, gunshots rang out at his rally. Here's the moment. See something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. These are extraordinary scenes out of Pennsylvania now. Gunshots ringing out, well, we believe, reports of gunshots. You can see just before Donald, Tr Donald Trump, he then touched his face uh, a couple of times and then fell to the ground. You can see uh, security has swarmed him. He's right now underneath where we, we can't see him at the moment, but he's just underneath where those security guards are. Uh, I believe we do have our US correspondent, uh, Jono Kersley, uh, down the line for us. Jono, what more do we know? Well, at this stage, this is just unfolding, but extraordinary, terrifying scenes unfolding in Butler, Pennsylvania, as you showed those pictures just moments ago. Donald Trump was on stage at a rally uh, in front of thousands of people who'd been gathered to hear him speak. he just finished criticising Joe Biden when he paused and shots rang out repeatedly. There were a number of uh, what appear to be uh, shots that may have been fired uh, that came uh, in the direction of that area. And you heard the Secret Service agents on the microphone saying, move, move, move. We're obviously still uh, awaiting for more information on the ground as to exactly what is taking place. It appears as though that the uh, former president, Donald Trump, did get up afterwards. We are being told that he did get up afterwards uh, after this incident that has taken place in Butler, Pennsylvania. But as I say, this is just unfolding as we speak right now in Butler, Pennsylvania. Terrifying scenes uh, unfolding there. Secret Service agents swooping on the former president. You have to look back. Uh, when it comes to shootings of presidents in US history, look at the likes of Abraham Lincoln. JFK obviously assassinated back in 1969. Uh, 62. Ronald Reagan also shot at in the 1980s as well. Uh, obviously, uh, detail is still coming through about exactly what has taken place here today in Butler, Pennsylvania. But we do understand that the uh, former president, Donald Trump, uh, has got up after this incident. Uh, and I'm being uh, shown images here. I can see these images now of uh, Donald Trump back on his feet right now as we speak at that podium in Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm told those images are coming through uh, right now. These are just extraordinary scenes uh, unfolding in the United States of America. We now await to hear more on what exactly has taken place and more on what uh, exactly unfolded there and particularly uh, how the former president actually is at the moment. Uh, so we will await more official confirmation of exactly what has taken place here. But still, these are shocking scenes for the thousands of people that had been gathered here in the United States of America at Butler in Pennsylvania for this rally. This country has been divided by politics uh, over recent years and you can see these images that are coming in now. They uh, really are quite terrifying. But w w as, I, as I mentioned, uh, these pictures that show Donald Trump, you can uh, see that uh, he appears to have uh, at least some blood uh, on his face at the moment, but we are waiting to hear more confirmation on his condition. There is blood on his ear, we are told. Yes, Clint? I was just going to say, uh, look, Donald Trump, you can see there, raising his right uh, fist in the air. He waves to, uh, to his supporters. He's uh, swamped by Secret Service. There's five or six Secret Service personnel who are shielding him. This is a, sh a scene of, of just utter chaos. What sort of security, just to give us an, an idea, you've been at many of these rallies, what sort of security uh, surrounds and follows somebody like Donald Trump? 
full secret service. Oh, absolutely everything. He's got full secret service uh, with him everywhere he moves. He travels in an incredibly large convoy whenever he is on the road. He has secret service detail attached to him at all times, personal protection that is always with him. That means not just at a rally like this, it means when he is moving to and from public events, it means he's got secret service also with him uh, at his properties, wherever he may be staying, whether it is in New York or whether it is in Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Uh, but that's the kind of sort of security detail that travels with the former president himself. Joe Biden, the president, obviously has Secret Service detail attached to him as well. But those Secret Service detail, there'd be some uniform, there'd be some of your plain clothes, and they are always ready. In fact, uh, when he appears on stage at events like this, you quite often see the Secret Service standing off to one side. They are very, very close by for exactly scenes like this in order to move in and quickly protect uh, either the president or a former president. Their job is to be personal protection, their job also to be bodyguards to keep these uh, high-profile individuals safe, uh, so, but obviously so as to Jono, what took place today, so Jono, we saw the Secret uh, Service very quickly pounce there, guys. Sorry to cut you off. He's certainly been injured. We have seen a blood uh, coming from his ear, but it appears not too seriously injured. He did get up again, uh, waving his fist defiantly before being whisked off in one of those security uh, cars. We want to uh, bring in former advisor to President Clinton, uh, Laura Schwartz, now in Chicago. Laura, what's your reaction to this? Well, Sophie, there's a couple of things going on here right now. If you look at the picture of the stage, your viewers should know that that apron in front of the straight stage covered by the red, white, and blue mm. bunting, that is bulletproof. Depending on the podium that they choose to use, and often they do that based on risk factors and threat levels, would also be bulletproof. It looks like, though, they were using the lectern, which was not what we call the blue goose ordinarily. Um, you saw the Secret Service around him get him into the car. Just like White House staff advanced the movements of the president, the Secret Service will have been on the ground at that rally site for about five days. And part of what they do is identify trauma one centers in which a case of emergency, they know where they're going to take the president to and how quickly they can get there. And that Trauma One Center would have doctors on alert for something just like this. The Laura. last thing I want to mention yep. is that in the audience, that shooter somewhere or whatever object that they use to propel towards the president. So you also have undercover Secret Service and the help of assisted law enforcement. So they want to contain that threat right there. Now, as people go into the rally site with the former president, just like with the president himself, they have magnetometers set up, similar to what we passed through at the airport. Mm. Those magnetometers are set to certain levels, again, based on the threat level. Uh, those magnetometers can be set so touchy that they can set off a, a foil from a piece of gum in okay. your pocket. Well, they can set it off. But if it's not that bad, then something could have gotten through. That'll be the big aftershock. Laura, let's talk to these shots that we're seeing live now into our newsroom. Mm -hmm. We can see the big Donald Trump crowds, the supporters now streaming out. It looks like that rally in Pennsylvania has been called off. Donald oh, Trump yeah. uh, has been taken away by the Secret Service. Look, we don't have much context around exactly why this happened or, or exactly if Donald Trump was uh, significantly injured. We'll get that shortly. But what could this do to his campaign? How could this sort of change the game? Does it have the potential to do so? Uh, no, in fact, I would think that it would, uh, especially because he appears OK, okay. Uh, that Donald Trump would come back more defiant than ever, sort of like when he came back from COVID-19 and he raced up to the balcony of the South Portico. I would expect as long as he's treated and released tonight, we would see something similar to that. He saw a bounce in his numbers among his own base uh, after that. And I could see that helping, you know, happening to him again tonight. And get a boost and even more uh, ardent supporters. He can say, hey, look at what they're trying to do to me. First, the Department of Justice tries to, you know, try me for charges on Jan 6 and trying to find votes. You know, he's talked about the weaponization of the Department of Justice. Um, so this would kind of go right along with his, uh, with those messages that he's been doing. Do you think this will stop public rallies, though, or reduce them? It's obviously going to increase security. 
Uh, no, I don't think you would stop it. You're absolutely right, Sophie. I think it can increase the security. You can also do rallies in a different area. Uh, usually you do not do them where you've got a periphery of tall buildings because you can only put so many snipers on so many buildings and check all the windows and all the surrounding buildings. So it could be that they, they go to a different format. Still, he loves his adoring crowds, but outside it's less contained than, for example, inside a roofed stadium. Uh, we've seen him do stadium events before. So there's always something like that to be taken into consideration between the staff that know where they need Trump to go and how many people they want there, uh, depending on his polling numbers and, and his messaging. And they work together with the Secret Service to say, uh, OK, we can accommodate that. And Secret Service is outstanding to accommodate the most craziest of all requests. Knowing, But... There are definitely times that they say, let's do it here instead of there. Let's make the crowd side a thousand less versus two thousand, um, that sort of thing. Knowing Donald Trump so well and, and, and seeing how he's been sort of behaving the last few months on the campaign trail, how do you expect mm -hmm. the former president to react in the wake of this, this moment, this scare? Oh, I think more determined than ever. He's going to use it to get additional votes. You know, Donald Trump, if anything, is just a very savvy professional when it comes to branding, just like The Apprentice and, and all of his, uh, you know, uh, patents and ice water, you, you, you name it. So he'll use this to his benefit for sure. Um, just thank God it looks like he's okay. Extraordinary scenes out of Pennsylvania this morning. Uh, Laura yeah. Shorts, thank, sh thank you so much for your insights. But Donald Trump, it appears, has been injured at that rally. We did see a bit of blood coming down at the side of his face near his ear. But it does appear that he, he hasn't been too seriously Look injured because his... he did get up again before being whisked away by, by that security. Look at his reaction in that very moment, though. A significant scare mm -hmm. and he's Chad, pumping his fist, mm -hmm. waving at his supporters. You can only expect that this moment, this incident, will just further mobilise mm. that, that Donald Trump fan base. It could be an extraordinary turning point in what is already a wild, wild election. Um, we'll have the latest on this uh, news story as it comes to end. Uh, stay with us on Weekend Today. More on this significant breaking news out of the United States in the news ahead. Uh, but... Uh post, I guess, the 1976 Land Rights Act and the uh, Mabo decision in 92, and with the Native Title Act, we've seen now accumulated asset base of something like 60 plus percent across, across Australia nationally, and, and the North, it's something like 80 plus percent. So, um, but unfortunately, uh, there isn't the, the necessary kind of capital to help to activate those assets. Uh, we've seen that the current um, national closing the gap framework, which is largely a social deficit approach towards dealing with uh, this ongoing marginalisation, has failed to actually close the gap, uh, notwithstanding the very significant and important necessity to continue to fund uh, that. But the only way future is for us to own our own risk and to actually look at a policy of shared risk and shared benefit. Uh, and that means um, how do we uh, look at, um, I guess, in simple terms, the money story and how it isn't really engaging or getting Aboriginal people involved with the local and the regional and national economy. And that, that has to change significantly because I don't think that um, um, anything we've tried to date has necessarily delivered anything of benefit or value, not just to Aboriginal people, but I think to the nation. Mm. Uh, Professor, tell me about the First Nations Economic Empowerment Alliance and, and what you see as the role of clean energy transition as part of this broader platform of change you've been discussing? Well, the alliance has emerged out of, you know, fairly significant and uh, detailed work over the last couple of years that uh, we at the ANU have, uh, through the International Symposium we held in 2022 and a subsequent six-part uh, seminar series focusing on the um, I guess thematic areas about this lack of engagement with the economy and what are the things that need to be done. And the alliance is uh, made up of a number of I think, senior uh, Aboriginal leadership who have been involved uh, in the economic space. So we've 
uh, the Indigenous Land Corporation. And we're just going to break into that story now because we are hearing some reports. We can see these pictures here. This is from a presidential election rally in Pennsylvania in the United States and we are hearing reports that shots have been fired there. This is where Donald Trump was due to address supporters, his supporters at this election rally. Um, he did win the swing state in 2016 but he was then of course defeated in the presidential election. So those are the reports we're seeing these um, crowds gathered here. It's no doubt a, um, an unfolding situation there. You can see a, a security presence which of course would have been there regardless but uh, yeah, we're seeing that heavy security presence there in Pennsylvania. And, and there are many unconfirmed reports at this stage and we're looking to, to get more information about those. Uh, what we do know is that something unfolded at this rally uh, not too long ago and that uh, Donald Trump w was removed by the Secret Service who were there protecting him. And of course, there was a lot of speculation, Joe, uh, as you've been reporting across this week, that today, in fact, could have been the moment mm. where Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican uh, nominee for president was mm. to announce his pick for his running mate in mm. his uh, who he wanted to be uh, the Republican candidate as vice president. So a big crowd that's gathering uh, or had gathered there and many, many reports are coming in right now about just uh, exactly what has mm. unfolded. We're just trying to find out uh, so we'll get some mm. information that is confirmed. Mm. But we know, Dan, at these sorts of events in the United States, there is already a very heavy police, uh, heavy security presence. These are highly orchestrated events and obviously, as you can see, a lot of people who gather there. So there is always that heavy security mm. presence. People are on edge. Um, but yes, as, as we said, we're hearing these stories that shots had been fired, that the Secret Service rushed in to, to remove Donald Trump from the stage. He was due to address those supporters at that presidential election. Um, people gathering there for the Republicans' national convention, which is actually scheduled to start uh, on Monday um, or this coming week. Uh, so, and as you said, Donald Trump was expected to announce his running mate there. But this will certainly uh, put a stop to the plans as, uh, as security forces gather their, their thoughts and um, yeah, recalibrate what the plans are with Donald Trump. Uh, we are expecting to get more information on this from our North America Bureau Chief, Jade McMillan, who is standing by for us shortly. Um, just limited information coming through at this stage um, about these reports and about what's happening there in Pennsylvania. Jade uh, will be here with us shortly to bring us all the latest that we know at this stage. and. Uh, we actually are, we're hearing that we have got some um, vision we're going to bring you now of the moment that this unfolded. So I believe that we can play that for you now. Let's listen. In. <laughs> At that point, Donald Trump swatted something off his ear and there are uh, some reports that something had mm. hit uh, his ear or the side of his head. And of course you can wow. hear the, the really yeah. uh, chilling, well the screams of someone who was there in that crowd. Yeah, well you could hear what, what I could hear was what, heard, what sounded like gunshots mm. certainly and just before Donald Trump ducked for cover and you can see the quick response there from the Secret Service and the security presence there, um, they would be certainly on standby to react to anything and then you heard the responses from the crowd and screams from the crowd um, and so no doubt he was quickly rushed off stage and uh, we saw uh, the security vehicles, mm. um, the heavily armoured security vehicles as well so he would have been taken away from there. Yeah and that area would be in a complete lockdown right now as that investigation gets underway and we're still seeing uh, what appears to be the uh, Donald Trump, of course this is from earlier it's important to note, but Donald Trump uh, there mm. being surrounded by that Secret mm. Service detail. Mm. And trying to, to cover him I guess as well. And that, that looks like a thumbs up or a fist mm. in the air yeah. and, and he, listen to the crowd. Yeah, so Donald Trump I suppose signalling that he is defiant in the face of that attack. And there is a, well, certainly it appears that there's blood on his uh, right above his right ear there. But and listen to the crowd that is chanting as as Donald Trump, there, the presumptive Republican nominee mm. from earlier, is helped off the stage by that security mm. detail 
uh, with that very big police presence surrounding mm. uh, him and there at that Trump rally. Mm. Uh, as this has all just happened uh, in the last little while and, and information is still coming to hand. Mm. We know that this is the... Uh, so, so the US presidential election rally that Donald Trump was due to give an address at. So I'm not sure where in, where in the point of that address, whether he had started or had just gotten onto the stage, those details are still coming through when those shots were fired. But, uh, wow, that was a quick response from the security um, personnel there who rushed onto the stage, which is what you would expect in these circumstances. Yeah, highly, highly trained, each and every one of those security detail who are there to, mm. to protect uh, each of the, the political mm. candidates. And we're taking you back to those live pictures now, and it, it appears now uh, that much of that crowd is moving away from that area immediately in front of the stage, mm. uh, as, of course, this is all very much unfolding in real time uh, and we're starting to see you know, numerous breaking news alerts come out mm. of the United States from uh, reputable news organisations there, many of which, it must be noted, Joe, were, were carrying this live at, yes. at the time when this happened and we're seeing reports of people saying that they saw this live mm. uh, happen in real time, mm. uh, which, of course, would be incredibly chilling regardless mm. of the politics. Uh, with a major political candidate this close mm. to uh, an enormous election mm. where you and I have both been covering mm. this for months now mm. and how, how hectic this campaign has already been. And you know tensions are always high around these mm. sorts of events and, and, and elections in the United States but this one in particular um, is heightened and so yeah you can see there in the live pictures there from Pennsylvania the crowds are beginning to clear now. I, I imagine they might be being cleared mm. as well by the security services so they can sweep the area and uh, um, there would be s some of those security services focused on Donald Trump and getting him into the car and into yep. safety and other security services also watching the crowd Absolutely. and potentially finding who was responsible for this. And, and there are all sorts of protocols that kick into gear immediately in terms of, of where mm. Donald Trump would have been taken, what emergency uh, evacuation routes there would have been, uh, mm. also the investigation there in that moment and, and the sorts of procedures that fall into place immediately. And this mm. is something that the Secret Service train uh, for months and years for mm. these sort mm. of eventualities that, of course, they hope will never happen, but these are live pictures we're seeing. Mm. And no doubt they'll also be speaking to members of the crowd who were there, yeah. getting uh, witness accounts of what happened, and uh, that will all form the picture, the part of the picture that will be emerging uh, over the rest of today and in the coming days as they, as news comes in about, about what exactly happened, how it happened, because as you know, with these sorts of events, it's so tightly secured. Mm. Um, so there would have been checks of the crowd, um, but anyway, we'll, we'll hear those details as they come in. I believe that we can hear now from our North America Bureau Chief, Jade McMillan, who is covering this story as the details come in. Jade, good morning to you. We know these details are still fresh, but what can you tell us? Well, look, we're still trying to figure out what has unfolded. Donald Trump was appearing on stage at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. He hadn't been speaking for very long uh, when these loud noises rang out. We don't yet have confirmation uh, whether or not they were shots fired. Uh, Donald Trump appeared uh, to either dark or fall behind the lectern that he was speaking from. He was immediately surrounded by what looked like Secret Service officials, uh, people with weapons. Uh, he did uh, come up. Uh, there was a screaming that appeared to be heard from the crowd there. We did see uh, what looked like Donald Trump being brought to his feet. He appeared uh, to raise his fist. Uh, um, Marina and Emily, thank you so much for your expertise in this case. We do have some breaking news from the US we do need to go to now. There have been gunshots fired at a Donald Trump rally. This is near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Let's get straight to uh, our correspondent, our Bureau Chief, David Woiwood. David, what can you tell us there? Eddie, well, this has just happened moments ago. Donald Trump had been on stage in Butler, Pennsylvania, actually. He was moments into this uh, rally. He had been addressing the crowd when we have heard 
these sounds. Now, they sounded like gunfire. The former president has appeared to grab for his neck or his head or his upper body. He has then, it appears at this stage, very deliberately gone to ground. There was screaming in the crowd. The Secret Service has then rushed the stage and the former president moments later has popped up uh, within that ring of Secret Service agents and quite dramatically pumping the air. He looked to be OK. We think at this stage everything is just coming in right now. And then he was rushed off stage. He has been put back in that motorcade and Donald Trump has been taken away. Now, that crowd there in Butler, Pennsylvania, they are being evacuated right now. This is an incredibly dramatic moment. Uh, as you can well imagine, the phones there are jammed. It's very hard to get information at the moment, but we very clearly heard those sounds. They appeared to be gunshots, and uh, we should have uh, further clarification on that point uh, very shortly. But this was the, the moment we heard those sounds, and the former President Donald Trump has gone to ground. Just, just unbelievable what we're what we're hearing there. So, just just repeating some of of what you've confirmed there for us, David. Is so that the, the former president has initially gone to ground, but we understand is okay by virtue of the fact that he was later seen pumping the air, the Secret Service rushing the stage, um, phones jammed as you've described. And what we're witnessing at the moment, David, is basically the crowd being pretty calmly, you've got to say, methodically um, ushered out of, of the staging area there. Um, some chairs being thrown, as we can see there, some people being comforted, um, and, and some police there in uh, Pennsylvania helping the crowd um, disperse. This is extraordinary, David, when you look at how far we are out from the election and, and what we believe to have been transpired here. Absolutely. Uh, just to go back to that crowd, we heard that crowd actually yelling, screaming. Uh, there was clearly some panic in the voices of those many thousands who were gathered there in Butler, Pennsylvania right now. I'm just looking at these live pictures and uh, much of that field now is emptying out. The uh, organisers of this event are now taking all of that, uh, taking no chances now with this crowd and they are taking them out of that arena. Uh, but yes, we know that this is an incredibly volatile election right now. We cannot confirm what those sounds were. They sounded like gunshots. There was a volley of fire. In fact, I think we have those pictures and that sound now. Have a listen. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. So, David, uh, the, the pictures that we're just looking at yeah, there... Yeah, so that is... Sorry, sorry to speak over you. The pictures that we've just seen there, um, and Eddie, really difficult to overstate how, how massive this is. It does look as though... Uh, former President Trump clutched at, at his neck yeah, shortly just, after those shots were fired. Just paint the picture to us also where would, how much security he would have around him because he's not just a presidential candidate, of course, he's a former president. You can see them rush on the stage there the minute they heard these sounds. This is at the Butler Farm Show, so this is just outside Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Would it have operated like a normal rally, uh, David, where they would have had intense security for the people going into that rally? Absolutely. To get into one of these uh, Donald Trump rallies, Eddie, you have to go through multiple layers of security. It includes X-ray machines and other checks as well to actually uh, get in there. So they take no chances. In fact, we're in Milwaukee right now. We've just arrived and this is where the Republican National Convention will be held this week. And they're certainly taking no chances here. There is already roadblocks in place right around this city. So uh, the organisers of these events, they know that the uh, challenges uh, involved with uh, securing someone like Donald Trump right now, we saw those Secret Service guards rush the stage. As you point out, he's not just a candidate, he is a former president of the United States. So he comes with that detail uh, and given a lot of the vitriol and feeling among some parts of America towards Donald Trump uh, and the numerous threats that he would receive on a daily basis, none of those uh, security challenges are taken lightly. So uh, we saw that Secret Service. They have uh, really surrounded him very quickly. The president, uh, you tell me, guys, what you saw, but it appeared to me he, he went to ground quite deliberately. 
uh, and then he has popped up moments later, and we and did. And we saw that in, fist pump. And we don't have a blood. condition on We the can see there, David. I don't know if you've been able to see, but the vision that we're looking at right now with Trump mouthing something, I don't know if it looks like fight, Eddie, but you can see wow. quite clearly there is blood um, above the former president's ear there, which would indicate he has been struck by something. Well, whether that's the response from these alleged gunshots or whether that is actually something that happened as he was being taken down by what was at least a dozen Secret Service uh, men and women who rushed to that stage. Perhaps he was injured in that fall. We also have the moments here where he's he's being taken away from this rally. I mean, thousands of people there. Uh, he's there. He is being put into the car. Uh, he does appear to be safe, of course, reports from the US coming out saying he wasn't actually hurt. So whether that was from the gunshot wounds or whether he just took took a tumble as he went down. I mean, this is an extraordinary development Is what when what is already an extraordinary presidential race there in the US. As you say, David Warwood counting down to the Republican convention where Donald Trump is expected to announce his uh, uh, candidate for vice presidency as well. So a pivotal time in this campaign. Yeah, we're really at that inflection point now, Eddie. Uh, feelings, they are heightened uh, right across the country at the moment on both sides. So, uh, and as you point out, we, we can't jump to any conclusions just yet unless you've seen some other reporting around it. We don't know if it is gunshots. It certainly sounded like gunfire and we were standing in Milwaukee. It all happened in, uh, as you say, Butler Farm, Pennsylvania. We have to be very careful around that at this stage. But it certainly, it did not look good. And if you're now saying that he popped up with blood on him, I've just seen some pictures as well of the former president being taken back into that motorcade and he looked to be OK. There was a real fist pump for the air. Uh, we saw a massive crowd around that car as well. So it appears very early on at this stage, not knowing his injuries, that the former president is OK at, that, at this point. So that is the good news. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is uh, for the state of politics here in America, if indeed that were, they were gunshots. No, certainly that is the case, that there's, there's no reports that he has been hurt in a major way, um, but there were definitely the pictures that we're looking at now. He does have an injury above his right ear as he continues to, to fist pump and G up the crowd as he's removed from the stage there, David Woodward. We haven't actually heard much from Donald Trump in the last couple of weeks. He hasn't had to speak or do any of these appearances because the, you know, the Democrats have been very much focused on Joe Biden's battle for the presidency. So this is really the first rally where we saw him, you know, get the troops together and, and you know, rally his support base um, as we head towards that convention. So how significant was this event in terms of the campaign trail, David? Very significant for the former president. As you say, he's kept a very low profile over the past couple of weeks. He's been quite happy to uh, really allow the Democrats to just eat themselves at the moment. Of course, Joe Biden is going through an incredibly bruising process right now. He's uh, quite happy to let the Democrats sort of uh, self-flagellate in a way. And he's been very quiet. It is very un-Donald Trump. He did hold a rally three or four days ago uh, in Florida. He sort of just hit on his major topics that he usually does. Uh, and then we have been waiting for this one today because the former president had been teasing that announcement of a vice president. Now, whether or not he was going to actually get to that today, uh, we don't know. Or he may have been saving it for here in Milwaukee in a couple of days' time. But uh, we are at a really incredibly volatile point in the election cycle right now. Uh, we have seen uh, the sides, real, those lines, those battle lines have been drawn in so many ways now. We've seen uh, the Democrats, they are in civil war at the moment. There is a real anger and a disappointment among some sections within the Democratic Party about Joe Biden's insistence to now stay in this race. There is certainly none of that on the Republican side of politics. They are all behind this man, this man, Donald Trump, and they were ready uh, to confirm him in a couple of days' time. I'm sure it will still happen. I hope it will still happen for the party's sake and for the sake of politics here in the United States that uh, we still get to that process and the former president uh, is OK because you don't want to see violence in any of these situations. Uh, and, uh, yeah, hopefully we get a report on Donald Trump's uh, situation quite soon, guys. Well, so, David, uh, I mean, there is, as Eddie's mentioned, a lot still to be clarified here, but there is a lot of information that we do have to work with. So if we have a look, uh, we're looking there at the Secret Service surrounding uh, Donald Trump. But, but what seems to happen, and, and again, there is still a lot to be clarified, it seems as though Donald Trump clutches at his ear before collapsing onto the stage and then he is rushed by the Secret Service. So it, it is highly possible that some of those injuries did happen when he was rushed, but it does certainly appear as though he was struck by something 
because he clutches his ear or his neck yep. region uh, before going to ground. He then uh, emerges, as you can see there, quite clearly. There is some significant blood above his ear and dribbling down his face. He appears to mouth the word fight, but we have to clarify that as he is taken away to the car. Now, David, this is... It is difficult to overstate how massive this is in terms of the complexion of the upcoming election, and it is difficult to overstate how much this may sway people in the lead-up to that election, because what I want to touch on, David, is just how masterful, no matter your position on Donald Trump and his politics, how masterful this man is in terms of PR and in terms of managing bad PR. Let's not forget, of course, he is a convicted felon. How this may change or may really energise his base in the lead-up, David, to the election. Yeah, and look, it might be too early to say exactly how that will energise that base, if indeed it actually does, but certainly there is a real flavour to American politics right now, Matt, and uh, there's a real heat and intensity to it, and we have seen that. And as you say, Donald Trump, he is a master of spin, he is a master of marketing, you pointed it out, he is a convicted felon, he is also a sex offender, yet he is the most loved figure within Republican politics at the moment. In fact, he is almost a godlike figure. We have seen uh, elements within the Republican Party really worship this man. They see him as the saviour for all of their perceived grievances and ills that are happening in the United States right now. He is the man that was going to save them. So uh, for this to happen now, I could only assume that it will just send people back to their barricades, that they, those lines that had already been drawn are even deeper and stronger right now as people uh, now get ready, I suppose, to fight this election uh, on a new frontier. Well, David, let's look at the timeline here. So we're two days before the Republican convention in Milwaukee, where you are at the moment. This is an event that was held at the Butler Farm Show. So that's outside Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, a key swing state in the U.S. elections. Uh, the crowd started gathering there from about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Trump was due to speak at about uh, 5 p.m. It's just gone 8.30 here, of course, in Australia. Uh, 6.30 in Pennsylvania at the moment. He'd only been 10 minutes into his speech. When the moment happened... Uh, when what sounded like gunshots rang out. Let's have a listen to what happened at this Butler Farm Show rally once again. Here it is. And, you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said...